We are back on Friday Night Lights, presented by the Dog and Pony Show. I am your host, Rhymester. Shout out to the sound guy, Ben. One of the most important people when it comes to doing things, you say. Woo! We got him a case of beer, you know. Hopefully he's going to finish it off Big before ben. the end of the show. Big Ben, there we go. We got Mike Logic in the building. Who? Jones? No, Mike Logic. Oh, okay, right. my bad, my bad. You said who? I was thinking Mike, Mike Jones. <laughs> Scotty, that's probably doesn't even know who Mike Jones is. Mike Jones. Mike Jones, 281-330-8004. Has anybody called that number before? No, no, no. Look at C-Max like, yeah. Hey, Mo. Yeah, yeah. Call it right now. See if it works. He probably, my, hey, Mike Jones probably doing Uber like Young Jock or something. <laughs> Mike Jones, where can I pick you up? <laughs> it's no longer in service. So what's up, Mike? How you doing, man? Happy what's up, Brian? So, hey, thank you for having me. Well, appreciate of course, man. C-Mac, Scotty, Ben, everybody. everybody out here at Kame. Well, when I thought of this you know, show, I thought I, I wanted to bring like an OG. You know what I'm saying? I consider you like... Not like you're older or anything, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just yeah. the OG in the scene. Like most, like most Cyrus as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay, grades, it's okay, yeah. it's okay. No, I feel that. But no, like you definitely have the knowledge when it comes to hip hop and basketball. That's what you know. I think our friendship really kicked off. Is you know we're always hitting each other up randomly about some basketball news or about yeah, you know, very something that's similar happening. interests. Yeah. So when I was listening to your podcast on that, you had mentioned you were a young cat in the '90s during like the the Bulls run and all yeah. that stuff. So you know I was just a baby, but I'm curious as to what the atmosphere was like in Chicago and the world during, like, the golden era of hip-hop and that Chicago Bulls run. Yeah, so I'll, I'll answer the Chicago Bulls question. I was pretty young myself when, when they were winning championships. I wasn't even a teen, teenager yet when they won their first title. So as far as what was going on at that time, I can't really remember too vividly. I do remember one thing, though. If, when the Bulls won, cars would drive up and down the streets – honking their horns, and nobody was getting any sleep that night. I remember that for sure. I was also privileged to uh, go see Allen Iverson's rookie game in 96. I was, it was a part of this, uh, this thing called the Drop-In Center. It was for local teens in the area, and you know they would come and play air hockey or floor hockey. And actually, I was a G at floor hockey. I was an all-star goalie at floor hockey. So if that ever comes up on Jeopardy, now you know. Floor hockey. Floor hockey, all-star goalie. But they, they took us to watch the Bulls in 96 versus Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson, for anyone who doesn't know who Allen Iverson was, he was the best player on – who for anyone who doesn't know who Allen Iverson is, he was the best player on that court that day. Even with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. He had something to prove. He had something to prove, and he was definitely the best player on the court uh, that day. But the, the, ni- the 90s was, was crazy. I remember uh, watching on TV – the 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 celebrations in Grant Park. I don't know if you you you've seen how crazy those celebrations yeah, are. Yeah, when, uh, the, when uh, you brought the Last Dance, you said you wish it had more episodes. Yeah, and they for showed sure. this Grant Park was dude. It was like you it couldn't even packed. see an open area. And I wish I could have went to one of those. I also remember the shirts that Seven Eleven would sell with the cartoon characters of the Bulls on them. I remember I remember that pretty vividly. But as far as like. The games when I was a child, do I remember them? No, I revisit them a lot on NBA TV. I'll go back and I'll watch. And I'm, I'm a student of the game. I like studying film, you know, as nerdy as that sounds. I, I, I love breaking down basketball. It's one of the, the greatest games to me. So. so what about hip-hop during that time? Were you into hip-hop as a youth or did it come to you later on? Okay, so the first tape that I ever bought, I had to convince my aunt. I was in third grade when this tape came out. And I was visiting my aunt who was living in, uh, I was visiting my uncle who was living in Ohio at the time, and I went there with my aunt. And I'm like, Aunt, I'm third grade, mind you, please buy me the Snoop Dogg doggy style tape. Please. (laughs) The artwork alone blew my mind, but the music, the the, the rapping, Dre's production, uh, the dog pound on there, just oh, Lady of Rage is nasty. She she doesn't she doesn't get a lot the credit that she deserves, but Lady of Rage back on uh, Doggy Style and in the Death Row days, Lady of Rage was nasty. But that Doggy Style album just blew my mind and opened up my eyes to hip hop. So I remember I bought that tape or had my aunt buy that tape. I bought the Keith Murray, the most beautiful thing in the world tape. I don't know if you've ever heard that. That was a popular tape back then. As far as the the 90s era of boom bap, golden age hip hop, I didn't have 
someone at the time feeding me that. So I missed out on a lot of dope MCs at that time, and I had to learn about them later on. I got caught up in the No Limit era. I thought I was a No Limit soldier for a while. <laughs> I had the chain and everything. I had the... Oh, man. we did. I was, I was never really into Backstreet Boys. I respect them. They sold a lot of records, but it wasn't, it wasn't my jam. But I had the No Limit tank. I had the No Limit I'm a Soldier shirt. My boy, it's, it's my boy Jesus' fault. He was like, yo, you got you to gotta check this out. I, I really like their energy for whatever reason. Master P is a genius when it comes to hustling music, like building his enterprise. So Master P definitely gets props from me. And he kind of created his own sound. And uh, definitely he was, he was repping for a, a little while for sure. Like, and he hooped. And Percy, Percy Miller hooped. So definitely props goes to Master P. Um, I remember getting the Warren G. This was the first CD I bought, the Warren G. Uh, Regulator CD. Man, hey, Warren G.'s not the greatest rapper in the world, but his production and the simplistic raps, like they, his voice, the simplistic raps and the production on that album is phenomenal to me. I, I love that album. I wish, I, I, you know, I, I wish I did have someone feeding me, you know, more golden age boom bap type cds back then but like i said i i learned later on i was really into tupac i was really into bone thugs and harmony you can kind of hear the bone thugs influence in my rapping a little bit um but yeah for the most part like i said i was i was a teenager when i started to find out about cool g rap and cool g rap is one of the greatest rappers of all time well you me. did your homework you went back you know what i'm saying like it doesn't matter i tell people it doesn't matter if you found out when you're young when you're older as long as you did the history you did your homework you went back and saw where this hip-hop started how it got here everything in between there's so many stories in hip-hop like it's yeah. endless it's, and it's, i have it's people that help endless. educate me and you know i, I educated myself too so I, I always think it's a good thing to, to put people on to music. You know, They can do what they want with it. At least you open up their eyes to it. Exactly, exactly. So let's get into your music now. So when I was looking at your catalog, I got as far back as 07 to the drawing board that you did with Ronu and Division One. Correct. And then nine years later, you did Overdue. I was thinking, I'm like, oh, huh, I wonder why he There's called it Overdue. a bunch of CDs missing. Uh, oh, see, that's, that was my very no, next no, no, question. No, no. So what... what What's the nine year gap? Were you not working? Were you were you working or yeah. it just wasn't, you know, dropping it? Was it somewhere else? So because of the gap I get that question all the time. And the easiest answer is my heart wasn't in it. For whatever reason. You know, I I'd make little songs here and there, I'd write raps here and there, but the way Ever Evolve goes, the way you and Radcliffe and Mo Cyrus go, it wasn't my heart wasn't in it like that at the time. And I remember in the last interview where I was asked about this, I, I was kind of blaming certain situations for it. And I want to make sure that I make it clear that it's, it's nobody else's fault but mine. I just, for whatever reason, I was doing other things at, at the time, and I, I didn't really take it seriously. And it took a while, you know, because Throw MC and Ideal, they had constantly, they had constantly been trying to get me to rap. Like, bro, you're so good at this. Why, why are you wasting your talent? Ronesh, another guy, he just keeps feeding me beats, feeding me beats. And, uh, you know, eventually I picked up the pen again. I have to thank Matt Lock. Matt Lock was a big inspiration, just as well as those people. So I got to give credit where credit is due. But Ideal, Throw him C, and Ronesh constantly feeding me inspiration uh, to get me off my ass and put the pen back in my hand and start writing. Is there projects before 07 that you might have done under a different name maybe some cassette tapes no. anything no that was like that I've was the always, first that was the first uh i've always you're gonna make me go back to high school huh because let's go <laughs> you're, you're never gonna let's, let's hop in a delorean and go never back gonna, you'll never find the high school uh the high school cd it's, it was our group was called turbulence rona was in the group it was my boy mike we, we actually had two mics, three mics in the group, considering, uh, counting myself, and then my boy Actual, who, Actual to this day, even at 15, I thought he was one of the greatest rappers ever. If you listen to my Overdue album, and you go to the track, How It Goes, where I'm talking about my mother and her schizophrenia and mental illness, the second verse is dedicated to my boy Actual, who also suffers from schizophrenia. I don't know where he is. Um, I wish him well wherever he is, and I hope he's healthy, but... If you listen all the way to the end of the song, 
you'll hear him when he's 15 and he sounds like a monster. Like there's no way you can listen to that and deny the greatness. So listen to my album Overdue, go to the track How It Goes, get to the end of the track and you'll hear Actual. Shout out to Actual, man. Hope you're doing well out there from your boy Mike Logic. For real. So let's let's get into some newer stuff. So Shy Native Entertainment, you're a brand ambassador that uh, you had mentioned to me. Um, I had seen you guys, I don't want to say the beginning, but I've seen you guys like, I don't necessarily know when the beginning of that was, but I, I just seen you guys just being consistent with it. So how did it start and how did it get to where it is now? Yeah, you know, game, recognize game, just like you and Ever Evolve keep pushing. And this is just another extension of what you guys do, giving artists platforms to different means and ways they get their stuff out. Like, it's all appreciated and a lot of love, homie. Uh, Shy Native formed a, a couple years ago. Before that, we were Workhorse Entertainment. It was myself, Ideal, Ronu, and somebody else. Um, Ronu and the other guy went their ways and... Workhorse, workhorse Entertainment, and some of it was due to me as well, fizzled out. Um, me and Ideal would, would keep doing shows together over the years, and Ideal decided he's going to come up with another name for a label, so he chose Shy Native Entertainment. This must have been like five years ago. And it, it's, it's a fitting title because, one, he was raised in Chicago. Two, he's Native American. So I also have to put this out here or put this out there, that Shy Native Entertainment is in no way related to Chicago Native, the brand. So someone was questioning me about that the other day. Learn the separation. Learn it. it they're, they're nothing alike. I don't know anybody that has anything to do with Shy Native or Chicago Native, the brand. We represent Shy Native Entertainment. So I just wanted to clear that up for anybody out there who's got any misconceptions. But as, as far as... Uh, it, it's kind of a, a long question. Or no, 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 uh, long yeah, no, no. The, the, um, you guys were doing shows, to rocking together, and then next thing I know, you guys have like your own radio segment that yeah. you're doing with the Shy Native Radio that your radio personality on. Yeah. And then you got shout out to Words, dope MC. You got him on Very there as dope. well. What made you guys want to give back to to? Because you guys are essentially doing the same thing. You're you're putting artists on. You're letting them come in. You're interviewing them. Show, teaching them how to make a clean record. You know what I'm saying? A lot of artists, when somebody says make a clean record, not like, oh, yeah, that sounds clean. No, like cut your curses out, all that, because you can't swear on the radio. I can't tell you how many dope submissions we got, and they weren't edited. And as soon as we heard the F word, like, shh, can I swear on here? Shit. As soon as, as, soon as, we, as, soon as we heard the first cur curse word, I'm like, well, that's not making the air. Because it's not any of our jobs to go edit your music that that's part of being a professional right if your music is going to be played on airwaves that fcc can hear or the fcc can hear it's got to be clean so we decided to take a strong stance on that like we're not going to sit there and edit your music you know we got plenty of other things to do and we we got so many dope submissions that we never got to air because they they weren't clean and we've we've stated multiple times Clean, radio-friendly music. We said it on the air. We said it in promos. People have trouble listening. It's I feel people skill. just get excited the fact that they can submit somewhere and be like, oh, yeah, my stuff's going to be on the radio. Like, bro, listen to yeah. what the instructions of what they are saying. So It's unfortunate. So you guys, you had mentioned to me that, that uh, you guys had like a dissolving with um, ESM. ESM Radio? Yeah. Um, shout out to ESM Radio. Great radio station especially for people that want to get started with a radio show they definitely make it very easy so check out esmradio.net we just decided that we can get our own equipment and a big thing is we don't have to worry about us swearing and we don't have to worry about our guests swearing because it's a big fine if you swear and the fcc hears it so we, we do it we're going to do it ourselves we we've, we've started doing it ourselves and we're going to make it in podcast form. And it's also live every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock on Facebook Live. You type in Shy Native Entertainment. You go to the Facebook page. And it's a blast. We have a blast. It's a big family. Shy Native Entertainment is a family. Nobody in Shy Native Entertainment is not considered family. So There you go. Okay, so I like how your radio personality, and I feel that goes into our next segment, which is your brand new podcast, All Net. 
for the basketball yes. lovers out there. I listened to it last night. I really enjoyed it. You actually covered a lot of topics within like 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? You really yeah. got to the nitty gritty of it. It was fun it. for never doing a podcast before and never actually getting up on a microphone. And when I say microphone, my iPhone. <laughs> That's a microphone? Yeah. Hey, it's got a microphone. Not a bad one. You know, the, the podcast quality wasn't terrible. So uh, we're, we're definitely going to use microphones and um, we're, we're, we'll make it more professional as time goes by. But Wanted to you get just got to build it up, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you said in the beginning of it, you were like, yo, bear with me. Like, you know, this is me imp- improvising. Yeah. And here's the other thing. Like, over the years, I never paid any attention to sound and engineering. I just barely had the patience to write the raps to get in the booth and spit the raps. Like, I never paid attention to this side. And it would have benefited me quite greatly had I. But now I'm kind of learning the ropes. I'm going on YouTube, looking at tutorials on how to use GarageBand. I didn't even know about GarageBand until yesterday. So I'm, I'm messing around with GarageBand, you know, trying to record myself, uh, learning volume automation. I, I didn't know what that was until yesterday. So it, it's been a lot of fun. Ideal, he went to, uh, he went to Illinois Media School for, for uh, sports broadcasting. So he's got a background in that aspect, but he's also teaching himself how to uh, edit stuff you know, for videos and podcasts and audio. So it's a learning it's a learning experience for the both of us. He's definitely light years ahead of me. He was actually showing me on the first podcast, well, this is how you edit all those ums and hmm. So I really appreciate Ideal for doing that. See, we can edit that out, you know. Easily. Edit. Boom. Shout out, out to here. all the editors, man. So what are your goals with this All Net podcast? Where do you see it going? Is it just something like... I know you mentioned like you're not really going to have a schedule for it. You might just sporadically drop that. That was just me talking shit. Um, I think I think I want to have you know a date every. Right now, we're we're doing. I'm I'm with True Chicago Sports Fans. They're one of the partners with Chicago uh, with Shine Native Entertainment that are presenting this on that podcast. And we're gonna do. We're gonna switch off each Monday. True Chicago Sports Fans is gonna do their own podcast. And then the next Monday, I'm going to do the All Net podcast. So that, you know, that gives each other time to get content, get, get content gathered and edit it. Because you know how it takes time to do stuff like that. You, know, you, you it, want the quality, you know. Like you said, you want to get there right. as you work and build up to it. You know what it reminded me a lot of? Uh, when I was younger, my uh, step pops used to always play a 670 of the score. And it would be like, this segment was basketball. This was baseball. This was Chicago stuff. So was, was that like an inspiration at all to you? Listening so to so like I that? listened to 670 score a lot. Like, <laughs> I was listening to it on the way here for a few minutes. I have writing to do, so I threw on beats for the most part. I know Ideal is going to see this and be like, yeah, we got a studio session tomorrow. You better be right, motherfucker. <laughs> but um, 670 the score definitely had to play some kind of role in it because I've, you know, I've listened over the years and I've thought, what if I was in that seat talking sports? You know, I would, I, I would love that. Now I can, I can talk sports. I can broadcast it out there. Whoever wants to listen, who's a fan of basketball, that's great. If you want to con- continue this, the conversation with me, you want to hit me up, you know, in the DM or whatever, and you, you want to talk basketball, I'm all for it. It's all about, for me, just keeping the conversation of basketball going. Ex- and right now there's actually a lot of basketball content out there, even though basketball is not being played. You, you, you got – Players that don't know if they should resume the season due to they don't want to take focus off George Floyd's death and fighting for so social. I can't say social. Ever. Social injustice. Social injustice and you know equality. So they don't know. Kyrie. Kyrie's really been vocal yeah, about that. He's been that. very vocal about. He also been very vocal about starting his own league with other players. And, and I don't know if he has a plan for that. You know, I, I would I like... That was more of an impulsive thing he said, you know. I, I had to throw impulsive, that in there. Impulsive, what do you think? Is that an impulsive thing to say? I don't think he, I don't think he had, like... I think he just said it out of, like, just the emotion he was feeling. And was, we, we were talking about it yesterday in the studio, like, it, theoretically, it could be a good idea. Theoretically. But you got to think of just, like, the deepness of it, of, like, the contracts with vendors, beers, uh channels stations this that and the third like how many things and where are they gonna play college stadiums and what's it are they gonna start building stadiums are they gonna play in one place like because what you think owners of an nba stadium are gonna just turn on yeah go ahead you know what you could use my uh stadium to play your your new league games and our players gonna make our players gonna make 40 million a year Mm, i highly it'll take years for them to get to that level but the thing is now the question is 
is the NBA going to be split up of guys who are like, hell no, I'm not going to do that, versus guys who are like, mm, you know what, it doesn't sound like a bad idea, but then it's just going to be them butting heads. Right. And, you know, I, I don't really care about the owners of NBA. Obviously, Michael Jordan is the owner of the Charlotte Hornets, so, you know, props to him, but those owners are going to be fine. If, if the NBA dissolved, they still have generational wealth, so they'll be fine. It would be interesting to see if Kyrie came up with a plan because right now I just don't see it as, yeah, we're going to be able to pay people $30 million a year, $35 million a year like the NBA does because, you know, the owners have that big pot of money. So, I, you know, I don't know, if it's, I don't know if it's feasible. I don't know if it's logical. That is true. We'll see what happens, though, in the future. So for our last question, you know, we were supposed to have a show. Shine Entertainment was supposed to do its yeah, first man. show. That really sucked. Then, you know, this COVID happen. thing happened. So since 2020 is pretty much canceled for everything, what is Mike Logic and Shine Native Entertainment looking to do in 2021? If the world is, you know, still not in shambles. So even though 2020 is canceled, uh, Shine Native Entertainment is working on a collaborative album right now. We're actually going to be in the studio tomorrow. We'll be live if you guys want to follow us. You probably won't see this till till next week or whatever. So, but I'm gonna be on M I C L O G I K on Instagram. You can also follow Ideal at Ideal Raps on Instagram and Words W R D S one, and we'll be in the studio tomorrow. But 2021, we can't wait to throw our music festival again. We threw we threw one last year in the woods, right? In music in the woods, we threw it last year. It was awesome. It, it was a it was a great outpouring of support from the people that showed up and we're definitely man we were chomping at the bit to try to throw it this year and we were hoping that you know covid would uh covid would end sooner but it's you know it's still going on and it's still deadly and killing people so music in the woods is not happening this year but we'll be looking forward to it next year but for this year we want to get the shy native collaborative album done and out to the masses so i know 2020 is canceled but we still have plans for 2020 you still got to put in work in 2020 to right. get yourself ready it doesn't stop people yeah. think oh it's okay i'll just get back to it next like no this is the best time to learn a skill create content practice 10,000 hours everything and if they open up bars to the point where we can start doing shows again shine native nights will be happening and rhymster will be on the first show whether he likes it or not i like it don't worry so doing a track for us today or what what do you got for us yeah i guess i should rap since i'm here right i'm gonna do it, yeah maybe yeah, I was thinking you know, maybe. let me think about it real quick now i'm gonna do a track by uh, a, a beat from max julian he named the, the beat Dreams. I think I'm just going to keep the song Dreams right now. It's a working title, but Dreams is, Dreams is a good title for now. We'll be back with Mike Logic as he performs Dreams. We're rolling. Shout out Friday Night Lights. Something new. My dreams are manifested. Starving artists, damn near anorexic. But if your music doesn't feed my soul, I can't digest it. The brand's respected, cause the man who stands behind every line. I drop that realness and never leave the fans neglected. People love when you're on top, with a hand that stretches. But when you're down in your luck, they'll leave you somewhere stranded, desperate. The land's infested with mass deception and scandal elections. We repress oppression and scared to look at our damn reflections. Pop pills, sip liquor, and hellism. Trying to balance out the good and evil, but the scale's tipping. Hate to see another fail victim of the jail system, cause the devil sales pitched them. I must avail wisdom. Hope I live long and I don't die young But trying to make a living is unforgiving I'm high strung The television keeps my mind numb I don't want any regrets When the reaper's knocking and my time comes Cause I ain't ready to go yet Shout out Shine Native Entertainment I represent all day, every day Ideal, words, dome C Shout out Ever Evolve Scotty Rocks, The Dog and Pony Show Ben, Mo Cyrus, and Possum Money, I don't worship it, seen the worst that worse can get Find my purpose and I supply the verses that nurture it No one is purposeless and we all fall short of what perfect is When the pain is then superfluous I pin the words to fit, a feeling of that point in time And I crash upon your rhymes All you little girls and boys be kind Find your joy and shine, let the world see your light Listen, you will be alright, unlocking your potential That might be a key to life How can people be so blind, but they got everything in sight Some try to steal your dream like they're a thief at night Ain't even right, when they're looking down on you Always keep your head high you and I know life's so beautiful like a red sky I've had so much bad luck, you think that I don't stock And there's something's gotta give when they ask how I'm doing, just ponder it When the doubt is over, cash your darkest days shall come to pass Even when the cash is running low and bills are coming fast You know? 
Shout out the Dog and Pony Show. Friday Night Lights, Ever Evolve, Shine Native Entertainment. I am Mike Logic, and my C L O G I K on Instagram. Follow me on every streaming streaming platform. Follow me on every streaming platform. So you can edit that part out. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it.